Hello, Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I'm Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Well, um, we've left you guys hanging for a little while now. <laughs> yeah, again. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, you know, we just keep uh, backing up uh, illness into vacation, and first one, then the other. and It seems to be the way it goes. First, you got sick and then went on vacation. Now, I got sick and I'm going on vacation. Yeah. So we're squeezing this one in there, um, and I uh, I meant to put some articles up since we weren't well since we weren't talking to you not my yeah. articles articles that I was reading and so forth and I, yeah. I just don't log on to Facebook except to post this <laughs> podcast really mm-hmm. I did manage to get a little message out saying yeah. we would be recording as soon as we could this oh. is as soon as we can so yeah. here we are um, we're saving the drinking for later so no update on. Yeah, being drunk. No, no whiskey tonight. Yeah, so far. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so far. Um, so we were planning to talk uh, about the Hong Kong debacle. <laughs> yeah. Um, the stuff that's been going on really since the beginning of the year, nearly. <coughs> um, Sorry. Told you not to bring that here. Yeah, you know I'm better, but I'm not 100, man. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I guess I could have mentioned that before I came over, yeah, right? Probably. That's that's all right. Uh, I'll just spray everything down with Lysol and so forth. Later. You may need to. All right. Um, anyway, we were planning on talking about the Hong Kong thing and, and going into some depth on that, but you know, lots of stuff has happened. So this is something that I think will be going on for a while. I mean, these protests started in March. Yeah, it's, so, it's not going anywhere. I mean, they're definitely, I mean, they're dug in here. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that we'll we'll get to address it again later. But um, just so that everyone knows what's going on, uh, there have been um, some protests uh, in Hong Kong that started in March uh, due to changes in the extradition laws um, presented to the Hong Kong legislator in early April. It was announced in February. That's why the march has started in in March. Yeah. Um, it included this. The big deal was that it included a fugitive extradition to China and Taiwan with consent of the Hong Kong government uh, its legal system. Um, but and people were saying that it was a loss of sovereignty and that they felt like they would um, that they could be politically oppressed by China again, even though they live in Hong Kong. Uh, Hong Kong's like yeah. a special district. It's actually still part of China, but it functions under a different yeah, system. They, they have their own like laws and whatnot, right? Uh, yeah. And I a mean, lot that, more freedom, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it, it is the capitalist enclave in communist China, essentially. Yeah. Um, so but, basically the moneymaker. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, now, they did specify in the changes that it wouldn't include offenders facing death penalty anywhere. Um, possible torture or uh, any political charges. So, it, like the idea that you would be um, extradited to China because you were a dissident seems kind of far fetched. But it um, could happen. Though. Yeah, I mean, it, essentially, it's the the what's the expression? The camel's nose under the tent. Mm. Um, it's that no first really. list. Well, the idea is the that in the bazaars, like that, it, once you get up under the tent, then you can lift it higher and higher, and eventually find your way into the tent. Oh, okay. Uh, like, anyway. yeah. um, but uh, it <laughs> it was actually okay. So the changes, just again for a little background here, the yeah. um, the changes that they <coughs> proposed were the result of a Hong Kong man who went on a vacation to Taiwan with his girlfriend and murdered her, yeah. um, and he he confessed to the murder. Like it happened. Yeah. He, yeah. Um, but they couldn't extradite him to Taiwan to face murder charges, so they charged him in Hong Kong under some kind of financial crimes, yeah. which obviously doesn't hold the same kind of penalty <laughs> that a murder charge does yeah. um, because the murder didn't happen in Hong Kong, and they couldn't extradite him to the place where the murder occurred. So oh. they did what they could, yeah. um, and then they proposed these changes for this kind of situation, yeah. I, ideally, anyway. Um, they, they have dropped... The extradition law at this point, yeah, um, it's not being pursued in the legislature. Uh, it's, I mean, Carrie Lam, the chief executive at, in Hong Kong, says it's dead. Yeah. We know better than that. Any kind of political thing, like it's not dead. Yeah, um, nothing's ever dead. But it's it's not happening right now. Yeah, they're just going to wait for a better time. <laughs> wait till the people do. aren't in the streets. Yeah. <laughs> um, now it did. The focus of the 
um, protests did change from this thing about the extradition bill uh, to the oust of the chief executive, Carrie Lam. Um, she's seen as a tool of Beijing, and so they, they want her out. I don't know that they would actually succeed in replacing her with anything better, especially since they don't directly elect the leaders. They, there oh, is really? a voting system there, but it's not a direct it's not a direct kind of democracy. Hmm. So now the protests are actually um, have moved from that, although they still want her out, yeah. um, to uh, pro-democracy, uh, universal suffrage, and um, Hong Kong autonomy. Um, oh, wow. Which has been kind of a long, long-running protest Push. that's come yeah. up before. Yeah. Um, but they kind of saw an opportunity here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, the interesting thing, part from my perspective and it should be ours is that it seems like it's almost a joke that well you know the hong kong china keeps saying u.s needs to get their hands out of hong kong and and so forth um but (laughs) the national endowment for democracy which we've talked about before which is the uh, non-governmental arm of the State Department, essentially. It's the way that they get around, you know, pesky things like <laughs> treaties and so forth to instigate um, opposition in foreign lands without and getting the U.S. government like in that. trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the National Endowment for Democracy has pumped millions of dollars into the opposition movements in Hong Kong since 2012. Oh, really? Um, they, uh, you know, a bunch of the opposition leaders have ties with um, U.S. Uh, State Department officials, including... Um, Martin Lee met with uh, Mike Pompeo in May of this year. Like, yeah. um, and then we're familiar with the color revolutions that the U.S. Uh, intelligence services instigated all over the place. You know, um, yeah. and there was a New York Times article in, at the end of July, just like a couple of weeks ago, I guess. Um, and it said, uh, and this is almost like a throwaway line, but it. I don't know, it seems important. There was a line in it that said there were hundreds of people dressed in black, the color of the protest movement. Oh, yeah. Um, like, it's another yeah. color revolution. Like it's, another it's the black revolution, revolution right? Yeah. Where they're, yeah. you know, they're instigating. <laughs> and it didn't really have any, I don't know, like I said, it was kind of a throwaway line, but to me it just seemed like maybe the truth was kind of trying yeah, to come out there. Exactly. Uh, so... Anyway, same kind of things going on in Moscow right now, too. Yeah. Um, the U.S. Yeah. seems to be involved somewhat in that as well. I was reading just a little bit on Moscow today, mm-hmm. or not really a lot, but it came up when I was looking at stuff for Hong Kong. Mm-hmm. And that I, I didn't even want to wear it until today. That was even going on. Yeah, um, that's it hasn't been going on nearly as long, but it, really? yeah, yeah. Uh, just like a couple of weeks, I guess now. Okay. Um, these protests in Hong Kong, though, have been uh, become increasingly violent. Yeah. Um, protesters assaulting, assaulting police departments, uh, getting in fights with residents during attempts to disrupt the city, you know, like when they're blocking doors on subways and stuff like that, getting <laughs> in fights with people that want to go where that they want to go. Yeah, that actually um, need to have business to do. Yeah. <laughs> still um, capitalism. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Some people still want to make some money. Yep. And um, the police has been using uh, tear gas, rubber bullets, beanbag shotguns. Um, there's been uh, dozens and I guess hundreds at this point maybe of arrests. Yeah. Um, and so it's it's starting to get a little out of control. Yeah. Well, and like I say, I, I was reading today that they're starting to move military units and stuff like just onto the border and whatnot, mm-hmm. just just outside, just kind of like, hey, yeah. you know, we we're here, like yeah. we can we can come in, we if can we put need them into to. this really yeah. quickly, yeah, oh yeah. yeah, and they absolutely could, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it'd be a bloodbath, but they could do it. <clears throat> well, um, I think that that's. Uh, I, I don't think that that's really likely to happen. I don't think they want it to come to that because well, that could... There's too many people watching. There's, yeah. There's, it's too big. It, mm-hmm. it would look really bad and it would be a really... It wouldn't be good for them to, to go that route. Yeah. Well, but, if you go back into the history, um, the H- Hong Kong was seized by the British in 1841 after the Opium Wars. Oh, really? Right? Okay. And um, it was controlled as a colony until 1997. Uh, in 1997, it was handed over to China um, with a bunch of caveats related to uh, civil rights, uh, justice, autonomy, etc. Yeah. Um, the, this idea of one country, two systems. Yeah. That the Hong Kong people that are protesting see as being threatened right now, actually. Yeah. But 
Um, well, and I can sympathize with them. I mean, they they want to be their own independent yeah thing, you know. Mm-hmm. And so, this was an agreement. This was yeah. a, a compact between the the UK and China. Uh, this handover. Yeah. And so, if the Chinese and it was supposed to be hands off for fifty years, essentially till twenty forty seven. Oh really? Uh, they're supposed to maintain these this one country two systems <laughs> thing where the the Chinese the Beijing the central government of China yeah um, doesn't involve itself. Um, really in Hong Kong. Hmm. So if they send their military in there, then That's, maybe uh, it triggers some kind of response from the UK and they may have a case. And Yeah. Well, yeah, so, because, I mean, that would be agreements <clears throat> broken. Right. Um, and that may be the goal. Uh, certainly <laughs> protesters are running around with British flags and uh, U.S. flags. I was going to say, um, I've seen a lot of pictures of some very interesting um, um, signs and whatnot, you know. Yeah. Just... Um, just I wouldn't say like pro America, but pro our style, you know, government stuff. Mm-hmm. So. Well, the they've talked about these protests have gotten big too. I mean, yeah. a couple hundred thousand people. Yeah, and that sounds really huge, and and it is actually like a, a giant protest. Yeah. But bear in mind that the population of Hong Kong is like seven and a half million. <laughs> right. so, so that's that's. I mean, substantial. Yeah. It's substantial, but it's still a small percentage of the population. Yeah. All considered. So. Well, yeah. Now, of course, there's going to be some portion of people that agree that don't get involved yeah. in the protests. And, and so well, yeah, you will always have sympathizers, and, and like I said, you'll have extremes on both <laughs> ends. But. Yeah. So. Um. So, that's what's going on in Hong Kong. Yeah. It, it may be dangerous. I don't really see it as particularly dangerous right now. Yeah. Um. I am. Uh, it could like there's already strained relations between the U.S. and China, and if yeah. we if, if there's a connection proven, and yeah. I mean it, it's more or less proven. They already called out somebody from the embassy that was meeting with a bunch of protest leaders in a hotel lobby like in the last week or something like that. Really? Um, so U.S. embassy uh, person actually you know speaking with protest leaders it seems yeah. It's not good. It's a little fishy. Could be a problem coming up. Some impropriety. Yeah. Um, but since we talked last, there's been a few more shootings ah. here in the U.S. Yes. And, um, yes, there has. This, <clears throat> well, uh, obviously, this is a terrible thing. And well, I agree. Um, but... I, I read you earlier the the Neil deGrasse Tyson quote or tweet, mm-hmm. and um, and I think he makes a good point. I mean, it's you know these a lot of stuff happens all the time. Mm-hmm. The fact that I mean, yeah, these mass shootings keep happening, but I don't want to call it a local issue. But I mean, if you're outside the local community of that, it's just I mean. Things happen to people all the time. Yeah. You know. Well, an interesting thing is that I was looking at some statistics on this, and actually mass shootings, the the rate of mass shootings in a year in the United States yeah. has remained relatively constant. Yeah. Well, since for the a 90s. For a long time. Well, yeah. since the Because, I mean, this all kind of started in the 90s. I mean, I, and I may be wrong about this, but pre-really the 90s, I don't think there was. I mean, this wasn't really a problem in the 80s, was it? Um. I don't remember how far back the statistics went. That I was I've read at, the but. stuff I've, and I could be, I like I said, I could be missing something. But I mean, this really all kind of started. I think, um, I mean, Columbine wasn't like really where it started, but really Columbine and forward is really where it's kind of. Well, that's when it became the school shootings became a thing. Yeah. This is just mass shootings. Period. Yeah, yeah, but um, even before the, I just like I said, I could be wrong. I just don't remember hearing about that stuff really before the 90s well i i don't know yeah i, I, I can't don't, address I, that yeah um but it but it's not so, it's sparking but what, some interesting debates now though yeah and and that's kind of what i want to what i want to focus on here yeah um now of course there's the gun control debate that inevitably comes up every time something like this happens yeah and i, I really there's a couple things that i want to say about that um First is, people choose to take a life before they choose the weapon they're going to do it with. Yeah. 
Well, like I mean, the decision to kill has already happened when it, they pick up the gun. And I mean, yeah, you talk about the guns because that's kind of where we're at now. But I mean, wasn't it like Timothy McVeigh? I mean, like bombs are just as you can make bombs. Like, yeah. I mean, if once you make the decision that I'm going to go really mm-hmm. jack with some people, there's what plenty of ways beyond the gun to do it. Yeah. Well, I mean, they they've been running people down with trucks. Yeah. There's been mass stabbings. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. I mean, like. When when somebody decides that they're going to take a bunch of lives, yeah. they can find a way to they're do, gonna it. do it. Gun or no gun. Yeah, and and it's it's a sad thing, and I don't know. I mean, I don't know what the answer is because something something is causing this to happen. Like yeah. there's and I like I said, I don't know. I do want to address that too, but I have one more one more point to make on the on guns. The guns. Thing. Yeah, um, and that is that I I did look into some statistics on gun ownership and. Um, and rates of uh, mass shooting uh, injuries and deaths. Yeah. So, um, and there's essentially no correlation whatsoever. Really? None. Hmm. Um, states where they're, they have a high percentage of the population owning guns yeah. aren't any more <coughs> or less likely to have shootings than yeah. places where the than states where the population a lower talking about of the like population. mass shootings or just mm-hmm. gun violence in general no mass shootings mass shootings okay yeah because I, I hadn't really looked at the numbers but I well I mean in total numbers if there's more guns there's going to be more gun violence yeah I mean that it, well, but it doesn't actually necessitate that there's any more violence either well that's I mean, it's I, like the idea that uh, if you have a gun in your house there's more like more likely that someone in your house is going to be shot. Yeah. Well, yeah, obviously. If, <laughs> you know, if there's no gun in the house, it's less likely that there's going to be a gun fired in the house. That's yeah. true. Well, unless that, there's a break in or something. Yeah. I mean, but that's less likely than, <laughs> yeah. you know, than, than somebody, somebody accidentally doing something stupid. Shooting. Yeah. yeah, that's well. true. Um, but it, it doesn't mean that taking guns away actually fixes any kind of violence issue. Yeah. Um, the, the point is that the, the rates of gun ownership don't affect the number of people that yeah. are killed or injured in mass shooting events. Yeah. Well, I mean, you look at um, places like Chicago. I mean, they've got some of the strictest gun laws in the country. Yeah. And they have, like, some of the highest rates of gun fatalities. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like, you can't really legislate your way through this. Yeah. Like, I mean. It's not the And I would argue that, because I I did do some reading about, like, New Hampshire, they've got some of the loosest gun laws in the country. And they have, like, the least amount of break-ins and mm-hmm. gun violence and all the kind, of, the kind of stuff that goes along that, yeah. which kind of plays into the whole armed society as a polite society, mm-hmm. you know, which is well, what I've always said. Did you hear about this guy that went into the Walmart this past weekend um, mm-hmm. with an AR and body armor? Yeah. And with the intent of doing nothing, he was just, you know... Just free, on, free ex- what's, what yeah, do they exercise. Call it? Yeah, exercise. Yeah, I mean, it was an open carry state. It was like... I want to say it was Texas, but oh, I could be wrong. Oh, I, I could be wrong. It, it I may have been. it was been. Wisconsin or somewhere. It may have been. Anyway, I, I don't know. Um, and uh, But what happened when the police arrived is they found him being held at gunpoint by a normal citizen with a gun. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, so if yeah. he had intended to do something, he was held up by he was, a good person with a gun. Yeah, that was not exactly. A, that was not a law enforcement agent. Now, well, they made a big deal about this guy was a retired a uh, fire uh, firefighter or something like that. Oh, really? Like that gives him some kind of special I was, status. Well, but. I was going to say, I mean, they the firefighters should go through a lot of firearm training. Not that I know. <laughs> I mean, maybe. I don't, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> maybe in Wisconsin or wherever. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Anything's um, possible. But, I mean, they're trying to pass it off as that he's like another government agent. He, he's an arm of the government. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But that's not the case. It was yeah. just a, I mean, he's retired anyway. He's a normal yeah. citizen that carried a gun. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I, I agree. I think that you you limit violence by allowing people to exercise the right to defend themselves. Yep, um, I absolutely agree. But... This leads to something else, um, and that's uh, Donald Trump's talking points. No, this yeah. his speech after these events uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, and there were just some things in there that made me uncomfortable. Yeah, um, and I'm going to read a few of them. Uh, he said, uh, "Federal authorities are on the ground, and I've directed them to provide any and all assistance required, whatever is needed." 
We've asked the FBI to identify all further resources they need to investigate and disrupt hate crimes and domestic terrorism, whatever they need. These kind of things uh, make me uncomfortable for multiple reasons. First off, we already know that they pretty much ignore our Fourth Amendment rights. Like, privacy doesn't exist anymore. They'll look into anything and everything. Yeah. Um, now, they... Uh, they do talk about um, – he does talk about using social media companies um, to help them, and this is one of the ways that they get around Fourth Amendment when they're trying to pay attention – when they're trying when to they pay actually – When they actually – yeah. Um, is that – well, they say, well, the government's not intruding on uh, your privacy. It's these private companies that you've given access to your information, and then they just freely turn it over to the government. So it's yeah. not really – they don't need a warrant for that, obviously. Right. Like, there's no reason. Um and then uh, – now, Obama was the first person that I remember um, suggesting federalization of the police. I'm yeah. sure that he's not actually the first, but yeah. he was the first that I remember. That you've heard, And yeah. um, I don't know if you recall, but in Trump's acceptance speech for the Republican nomination, he talked about federalizing the police force. Really? Um, and – yeah. It was followed by a rumor he was going to send the National Guard into Chicago. Oh, yeah. You know, bring yeah, things yeah, down yeah. and so forth. Anyway, um, and this is something that I, we should all be concerned about. Yeah. Um, the police departments in the U.S. are already increasingly reliant on the federal government for equipment, training, funding. Um, it's resulted in the increased militarization and the, essentially the equivalent of a large domestic standing army. Yeah. Um, which which is one of the things of that like, we that's <laughs> yeah is one of the things that we declared independence not to have about. yeah <laughs> we did, we did <laughs> not want this yeah. still do not by the way um, he said uh, in that speech he said they're going this is the nomination the nomination speech, speech. Yeah. Um, they're going to receive the best weapons training and resources this country has to offer we're going to put an end to jurisdictional restrictions and increase police capabilities in terms of surveillance and the use of deadly force. Oh, Lord. Not only that, we're going to eliminate this so-called standard for probable cause. It's very limiting and frankly outdated. Our police forces are going to have much more freedom in terms of who they can arrest and why. Yeah. That's I mean, what he's that, pushing for. That, that should scare everybody. Yeah. I mean, whether no matter what you do or kind of where you're at. like I mean, none of us want to be harassed by the police all the time mm -hmm. and not have a way of recourse when that happens. I yeah. mean, there's, and that's already the case. There's already very oh, limited accountability. It's, it's horrible. Um, um, and, and that's the thing that we need to be worried about. Uh, I've been, I read uh, William Norman Griggs book that just came out, the okay. no quarter. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the time that he spent reporting, he spent reporting on local government and police abuse yeah. um, of the power that Which they Which I'm had. sure in areas is rampant. Yeah. I mean, there's so many stories in that. And I wanted to just like make some notes on any one of them, but I couldn't pick one. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, and that's kind of, that's, that's kind of where I think the disconnect is, is mm -hmm. so like you have somebody that does this research and has all of these accounts mm -hmm. and yeah, he turns it over to the public, but it doesn't go anywhere. Like there's, there yeah. needs to be some kind of mechanism mm -hmm. To, to fix this when it happens. Mm -hmm. Like when, when something comes out, like you were saying, like you couldn't even pick one to like, because there's so many and they're yeah. all so bad. Yeah. Um, I mean, where's the accountability, at, you know? Yeah. The one I think about though, and this wasn't in his book because it's more recent. He, he died a couple of years ago, I guess. Yeah. Um, but uh, he, there was the guy, and I, hopefully we all saw this video, um, the, the police came, they like raided his house as a SWAT raid. Actually, I think this is, I think this was related to one of those other things that we're talking about, uh, that we'll talk about later, the red flag law stuff, oh, but yeah. it might not have been. Um, at any rate, they raided his house and uh, um, there were half a dozen guys in SWAT gear with the, uh, you know, high power weapons pointed at this guy and they're, yeah. um, giving him a bunch of directions like real quick and he's like drunk and on his knees and cr and crying in his um, own like, home by the way yeah, yeah yeah on his front porch it's not right? like he's out in public somewhere like and, this uh, is his know, house please don't kill me please don't kill me and they're yeah. giving him all these instructions and he's trying to follow and then his, his pants start to slip down and he reaches back to grab his pants and they shoot him dead yeah I remember hearing about that and nobody yeah. was held accountable for that they said it was a good shoot and they, yeah. they're using this 
this thing that qualified immunity. Actually, I think that one happened in a hotel now that I think about it. No. Well, the Ooh. one I'm thinking of, he was definitely like on the front steps of his house. Oh, okay. The, I may be... Because um, the, the, the same... It may have happened the same the kind same, of thing. May the same type thing happened um, in a hotel because the guy... It was the same situation. He had mm-hmm. been in his hotel and his family was in there with him. And something happened and they'd done it like a SWAT raid on him and they had him in the hallway of the hotel. And the same type thing. He was drunk and... He went to, he was on his knees and they were giving him conflicting orders. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's sad when you live in a country where you, police can stop you and play a game of Simon Says with you. Mm-hmm. And if you lose, you get shot. Right. Like, I mean, cause that's, that's what it is. Yeah. I mean, you basically get shot for losing at Simon Says when you've got three or four different officers telling you what to do all at one time. Yeah. Uh, the bits and pieces of one of the things, um, that, uh, that Greg wrote about that I remember um, was that they followed this guy who is a member of a motorcycle gang. Um, he's a, he was a two tour veteran combat veteran with the Marines or whatever. He's visiting uh, his friend's ex wife or something, helping her move. Yeah. And um, the the police come in with like eight to twelve guys, um, all in SWAT yeah. gear, and they give him instructions. And like as he stands up, um, yeah. they. <coughs> presumably even to follow the instructions, yeah. um, they taser him. Yeah. And so now they're still giving him instructions, but they're hitting him with the but taser. But he's got the taser in him. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, he literally is falling over on his side, is, is like rolling around in his own vomit, yeah. and they're still giving him instructions. And then one of the guys steps up and like literally stands over him and shoots him two times in the chest. It's insane, man. Absolutely and insane. nobody was held accountable for this. And th- yeah. and that's the thing. They use this qualified immunity um, for uh, the police. It used to require uh, – so I was reading on this. This is kind of interesting. Um, it used to require that they acted in good faith that their actions were legal. Um, but they dropped the subjective good faith clause um, yeah. in uh, in a court case a while back. Really? And so it they changed it to only if the actions clearly violate an established law. Um, now that sounds like that would be tightening it up, right? That, yeah. That you take out the subjective portion where they, you know, they have to show that they were acting in the belief that what they were doing was legal. Yeah. Um, but what it's actually done is that it, it's it's made it far less restricting because there's no law, there's not enough laws essentially. Yeah. And this is kind of an absurd way, but yeah. of looking at it, but um, it's been used to provide absolute immunity because no law establishes a totality of circumstances. Yeah. Right. That, you know, this guy was wearing this color <laughs> clothes in this particular position. And, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah. There's no laws that specific. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so they've used that to essentially give police Free total rain. immunity. Yeah. Um, and now think of that. Like you can't, you can't even get at your local police, yeah. like the immunity that you have to, that you can't, they're essentially immune at the local level. Yeah. Now imagine taking that, moving it into the hands of the federal government with yeah. the full power of the federal government and the immunity of the federal government behind it and see if you think you could ever get any accountability out of any police department ever again. Yeah, it never happened. Yeah. Never happened. So, um, I mean, that's the that's the real concern with federalizing a police force. You com- yeah. lose complete local control of your law enforcement. Now, yeah. How dangerous could that be? Yeah. Like, and there's nobody to appeal to if things are, if you're being treated well, yeah. unfairly. Yeah, you got to go all the way up. Yeah, yeah, and if and it's, if it's already nestled at the top, yeah. there's nowhere else to go. Yeah. Well, and and here you are behind a whole bunch of other people in the same boat, like because. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's kind of like getting line. No, you want your you want your law enforcement and your government as close to home as you, it can be, yeah. because that's where it's going to be the most accountable. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the local guy is accountable. To you. Your local sheriff is accountable to the people of that that municipality. That yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, and that's that's what you want. Well, that's a big part of what we push here. Yeah. self government. Absolutely. You, you want local control. Yep. Um. Now there's more in this in the speech that Trump gave after the after the shootings, um, but and a lot of it is um, trying to identify people that are dangerous before they do anything. Yeah, which once gets again gets into this pre-crime stuff. I was going to say we get into thought crimes there, and that's yeah. that's a dangerous road to go down too. Mm-hmm. And what I want everybody to think about when it comes to these red flag laws, the same people 
who are reporting bogus stuff on Facebook right now will be the same ones reporting people for red flag laws oh, yeah. when they when it comes out because I mean that's that's what you're looking at. I yeah. mean that's. I mean, he says we must make sure that those judged to judged to pose a grave risk to public safety do not have access to firearms, and that if they do, those firearms can be taken through rapid due process. Yeah. Now he threw due process in there so that you can't complain exactly, yeah. but. I mean, when you they, put the word rapid in front of it, it yeah. gives me plenty of room yeah. to complain. And uh, he says, this is why I've called for red flag laws, also known as extreme risk protection orders. And essentially, like almost anybody can say that they think that you might be a danger to yourself or other people. Yeah. And they can come take your property away. Yeah. Preemptively. Yeah. Um, and then yes. you have to prove that you're okay to get your property back. Now, that's, yeah. that turns our entire that's, justice system that's on That's not how it works in this country. Yeah. It's just not. Um, oh, it's... Not supposed to. Not supposed to. It also creates another one of these situations where you have proactive police. There's already been, because uh, some states have these laws already. Oh, yeah. Um, Florida has a red flag law, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. It wasn't that long ago, I don't think, that some guy in Maryland was shot by the police when they came to serve one of these, red you know. Oh, yeah. 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 To take his weapons away. Yeah. And, um, and he uh, reacted in a way that they didn't appreciate, apparently, and they shot him dead. Yeah. And the tr- he hadn't done anything wrong. Yeah. Well, Until they came to take away his property. Yeah, exactly. And from my perspective, he's justified in defending his property. Yeah. Well, Even from the state. Yeah, I, I wholeheartedly agree. <laughs> yeah. Wholeheartedly agree. It just it doesn't seem like it... This doesn't seem like where the solution to this problem is. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, I, I, I think even with red flag laws, you're still going to end up in these situations where... Nobody saw it coming mm-hmm. because that's nine times out of ten. That's what they say during these things anyway. Rarely is it like, oh, well, we knew this guy was a problem. But. Well, no, I, I think I think you have that up backwards too. I think yeah. I think you have that wrong. They always say, oh, well, all the signs were there after one of these things happens. Yeah. All the signs were there. Oh, we should have known. Yeah. But I think back to the people that you went to high school with, for well, example. Yeah. I bet you can come up with a couple of them. name half a dozen. That if that, they had come yeah. in there and they'd shot up the school, everybody would have said, oh, we should have seen that coming all the signs were there yeah. but they never did yeah well exactly um so. i the the thing that really bothers me on this well there's so many <laughs> there's things. plenty I, I that think bother I've said that before every point that i've made but, yeah um he said uh, we must reform our mental health laws to better identify mentally disturbed indiv- individuals who may commit acts of violence and make sure those people not only get treatment but when necessary involuntary confinement oh mental illness and hatred pulls the trigger not the gun yeah. When um, he says involuntary confinement, does he basically just mean jail, or just like? No, uh, I suspect it, he means um, uh, committed to a, like a, a place to a mental health facility. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Um, involuntarily committed. Yeah, that's um, scary. Because, yeah, because I mean, you can start just doing that to anybody at that at this at that point. Well, the other thing is that the the people that have been now. Okay, so I, I heard an interview. I want to say it was on Democracy Now!, but I could be wrong. doesn't matter where it was. Um, but they said, well, why is it that mental health has been connected to all these mass shootings, even though these mass shootings are by and large committed by people that don't have any kind of mental health issues? Yeah. Um, like major mental health issues anyway. I mean, there's some depression and stuff like that, but yeah. you want to start but You can find people. that in anybody, yeah. yeah. Um, and so, and I thought, well, what a silly question, because the answer is obvious. Because most people would never commit mass murder. And so they think in order for you to commit mass murder, you must be crazy, right? <laughs> yeah. But that's not really the case. Like the yeah. it's only a small percentage of these crimes that are actually <coughs> committed by people with mental health disorders. Really? Um and it, like they may be crazy in another way, but that's not really the issue that yeah. we're we're trying to address. Yeah. And maybe that brings us around to the issue that like what do you think is causing this? Because yeah. There's clearly some kind of cultural Something's, problem. Because this, I, I I can tell you for sure, like, this didn't happen in the 50s and 60s and whatnot. Yeah. And there were just as many guns be- back then in there as there are now. <laughs> yeah, probably. Well, and I mean, it wasn't uncommon. Like, my parents will tell me all the time, you know, they took, they had, every kid in school had a rifle rack in the yeah. back of their well, car. Well, I went to and, school in that. And they, and. Kids went hunting before they came to school. Yeah. They had rifles. Rifle they had rifles and, in the back of their trucks that were unlocked in the parking lot of yeah. school. And they got in fights all the time. And never. 
nobody ever went to their car to get the gun. No. It was always, it's just something's changed. Well, there's a few things that I think are related to it. And this is all speculation. Yeah. Well, I mean, nobody um, knows. But I, I think that one, like the main thing is that you've given people no positive outlook on the future. Yeah. Um, you tell them they're going to they're gonna burn up in 12 years because of global warming or global climate change, whatever we're calling it these days. <laughs> yeah. Um, because of the climate crisis. Yes. Um, the, you know, they have no chance for a future because of the uh, climate crisis. Yeah. Um, you tell them that they have no chance for a future uh, where they can earn any kind of living because all their jobs are going to be automated away. Yeah. Um, you know, you, and then the other thing I think – and this, I always comes back to foreign policy right with yeah. me I, I, like i focus on this a lot but <laughs> yeah. um we have been at war for, a long for time. some Eight. of these people's entire lives yeah that's true we've been at war and if you don't think that talking about deaths in iraq and syria and afghanistan well, and all these places like it's not a big deal doesn't have an impact on people's feelings about the value of life yeah it, then you're wrong it just seems like a way out for some. I mean, I, I can't imagine how the government can be so surprised that somebody goes out there and kills nine people yeah. when they killed 900 yesterday. Yeah. And well, didn't think anything of it. It was not a big deal to them. They didn't care. Yeah. It, and so how can you convince somebody that they shouldn't care about that, but they should care about the guy? Up the road. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a good thought. I, and I, your, your first point, I kind of would agree with that too because I've always been a believer when you put people in boxes that's kind of when they get violent mm -hmm. and and exactly what you're talking about the constant when they feel they have no other choice yeah when when you deal when you're living in a society where it's constantly doom and gloom and you just feel like the walls are coming in towards you all the time everywhere you look i mean people are going to react violently mm -hmm. um and irrationally and that you know that could have a lot to do with it yeah, I, I think that that's a big part of it. Um, so, I don't know, just ideas. It's some sociologist's job or psychologist's job to go out there and figure out. Yeah, but the, here's here's what really irritates me right more not. more than anything though is nobody's really asking that question. No, like so when you watch the news on these things, that mm -hmm. that never comes up. Yeah, they well, never... they're just looking for a legislative answer. Let's concentrate yeah. more power in government. Government yeah. will save us. Well, and that's and <laughs> but it's it's so it, it's just annoying to somebody that that is looking for the real answers and, ha and to these questions to just have that just always be that's all you see in the media. Yeah. Well, and I think it's been uh, compounded by that. Uh, I, I don't think kids learn coping skills in the same way that they did when we were younger. Yeah. Um, I think that they're they're told that they're, uh, you know, that the world is just a bright and sunny place, and that you know they mm -hmm. deserve to win all the time, and <coughs> you know this yeah this whole. Um, what is it? Self uh, self image thing that has gone on in school that we're so concerned about upsetting anybody that we just give away everything, yeah. and then at some point you realize that life doesn't actually work that way, <laughs> yeah. And you haven't been prepared for failure. Yeah, that's true because that that is something that that I think a lot of kids don't get that they need. Um, and with essentially no, um. Uh, Segway whatsoever. Well, okay, I can do it this way. Okay. Here's here's the other let's, thing that Trump has done recently. All right. That it, this one may actually be the worst thing he's done since he's taken office. Oh, well, I'm yeah. Interested to hear. Yes. Um. So it was announced in February because we had to give six months notice, but they actually did on August second. Um, the United States pulled out of the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty that we had with Russia, right. uh, which limited the kinds of weapons that could be developed and tested by both Russia and the United States. So we're going to start testing nukes again. Exactly. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> um, Yay! So this is this is dangerous for Obviously. A, a, a number of reasons and and I say it's the worst thing that he's done. I, I think the second worst thing that he's done obviously uh, that I've mentioned before that I said was the worst thing until now yeah. um, was uh, was pulling out of the Iran nuclear treaty. Yeah. Well, that's always um, been my my point. Yeah, yeah. That's always been the big one. Um, and so that's two things now, two treaties that Trump has withdrawn the United States from that that the treaties themselves made the world a safer place from nuclear war. Yeah. And we are no longer a part of them. Yeah. All right. Um, 
And, you know, there were claims that the that Russia was violating the treaty. There's absolutely no evidence of that, Yeah. Um, that Russia was violating the treaty. Uh, there is evidence that the United States was violating the <laughs> treaty. Of course, this is how Imagine this always that. works. Yeah. Um, since I wasn't really planning on talking about this before, I don't have a bunch of notes on this. In okay. fact, I have no notes on this. This is all. Oh, this is all uh, just... This, this is all things that I remember, so I'm sorry I can't reference specific... Um, specific things like specific articles or what have you but yeah anyway um and i i think that this is uh now what i've read some um some people have said that the that this won't actually put us into another arms race yeah. um, i was reading uh bernard at moon of alabama the moon of alabama blog yeah Moon for alabama whatever it is anyway um which i recommend to everybody actually his stuff's pretty interesting but he was saying that uh he doesn't see this as a new arms race between the U.S. and Russia because well, Russia's already won. Oh, yeah. Um, well, I mean, yeah. I was going to ask, how much further is there to go? I mean... Oh, I mean, you can always make more nukes. Well, yeah. I mean, you can always make more nukes, you can, but I mean, you can, can make you make them, them more faster. effective? Yeah, I mean, you can make them more likely to get through the, the defenses. The dis- well, I guess defenses would um, be the big thing. But the thing. main thing, th- what this treaty did was it limited uh, ranges. Okay. So, is the, so that... No matter, essentially, it kept you from having short times to react. Okay. All right. So yeah. the idea was like it, it's that, not, if that, uh, that if they launched theirs, we'd have time to launch ours before. Yeah, the, <laughs> and you have time to figure out if it's a real launch or not. Okay. That's yeah. the other thing. Okay. Like if you start shortening the reaction times down to a few minutes, then you don't have a lot of time to determine no, whether it's whether, real or not. I got gotcha. you. Uh, before you launch your own nukes. Yeah. Um, and so the idea was to give more time so that you could determine whether it was real yeah. or even get on the phone and call you know pick up that <laughs> can we phone. talk this out <laughs> yeah. yeah um and say did you launch your missiles because our system says that you did and yeah. like figure it out yeah um if you if you get down to just like a few minutes to react you don't you can't do there's that. no time for that and yeah. nobody's gonna sit there you just gotta hit the button the whole yeah. idea is the mutually assured destruction was the deterrent right yeah. so the idea is if they launch all their nukes at us then we have to launch all our nukes at them yeah the idea is that if we both know that if we launch our nukes we'll be destroyed as well yeah Let's not do that. <laughs> then, then we won't. Yeah. And this has actually been surprisingly effective. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's worked so far. I mean. Yeah. Until it doesn't. And yeah. then there's a real problem. Yeah. Um, so now these things like these places where, like, we had essentially violated the treaty by putting uh, these defensive hmm. arrays in uh, Poland. Ah, uh, yes. Places. I've heard about some Turkey, of that. I think. Mm-hmm. A lot of pushback about that, yeah. Yeah, which uh, they could be traded out for nuclear weapons very easily. Easily, yeah. And um, and the Russians wouldn't know. And actually, yeah. um, what from what I read, yeah. the U.S. forces could trade them out for nuclear for nuclear weapons instead of defensive weapons yeah. without the Polish or the Turkish know. <laughs> we could just do it, yeah, yeah, and they wouldn't even know. And we're claiming that it's for defense against Iran, but they're in a weird place to defend against Iran. And like, yeah. anyway. Um, so that was, that was actually probably what ended the treaty yeah. is that we were ignoring it. Yeah. Um, we put Russia in a position where they might have to, they could, they couldn't know yeah. whether we had nuclear weapons right on their border. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so anyway, here we are again. And, and, um, like I said, though, Bernard said he, he didn't think that it was going to be another arms race because Russia had already won. Yeah. Because Russia intends only to defend itself. Yeah. And they have everything they need to defend themselves. Yeah. Um, so uh, if there's any kind of arms race, it's only going to be the U.S. spending their money. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and we're already essentially I was going to say, court. money we don't have. Yeah, like. <laughs> we're $23 trillion in debt already. Yeah. Um, so if anything, it's going to tear up our country in the long run. But, yeah. Because um, we're the only one that has like global hegemonic desires yeah um anyway uh the what that leads into though is where i think the real dangerous flashpoint is um and i don't know if you know what's going on in uh cashmere right now no i I don't actually well cashmere has been a um okay so after the british uh after the world war ii the british gave up the the raj their their empire their colonial holdings in um south asia yeah. Uh, which included India, English, uh, Burma at the time, Myanmar now, um, Pakistan, 
Is that it? That might be it. I, I don't yeah. remember. All, all these countries. Bunch and they all kind of split up. Yeah. Um, and uh, Kashmir was a disputed territory between Pakistan and India. Um, now, uh, Kashmir is a majority Muslim um, area, so they had talked about the UN was going to have let the people of Kashmir decide which country they wanted to join, but kind of um, India preempted it and they occupied territory in Kashmir. And so now like the north, kind of the northwest portion of Kashmir is controlled by Pakistan and the rest of it is controlled by India. Hmm, okay. Um, but they had maintained general autonomy, even though it, the India has like half a million troops in Kashmir to maintain the peace, yeah. um, as it were. Um, and but they'd had a kind of a special status uh, with general autonomy, and the the big thing was that only Kashmiris could purchase land in Kashmir. Okay. Um, so this guy Mohinder Modi has recently been elected. Um, as the, I guess, the prime minister of India. I have heard India. some about this. Yeah, because they're wanting to do away with that, right? They did do away with Oh, they did. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, uh, Modi's had... like this ultra-nationalist Hindu. Yeah. Um, and, you know, India is one of the largest Muslim countries in the world. Yeah. Um, they have like 200 million Muslims living in, in India. Yeah. But the, the total population of India is like 1.3 billion. Oh, uh, wow. <laughs> So um, the 200 million Muslims are, are like... 15% of the population or something like that. Yeah. So they're a minority. And they're, you know, all we hear about is the stuff in the Middle East where the Christians and the um, and the Jews are oppressed by the Muslims. Well, yeah. in Southeast Asia, the Muslims are oppressed by the Hindus and, surprisingly, the Buddhists. Really? Yeah. Like That's interesting. Um, you know, the those kind-hearted, peaceful Buddhists in uh, Myanmar yeah. um, have been uh, oppressing, expelling, and murdering the those terrible Rohingya Muslims for a long time. It doesn't <laughs> sound like very been, Buddhist to me. <laughs> I mean, yeah. uh, so they've been crossing the Always border. Always had a lot of respect for the Buddhists. Yeah, the, the Rohingya Muslims have been moving across the border into Bangladesh because they can't get citizenship in Myanmar, even though that's where they've lived for generations. Yeah. And anyway. And so India kind of does the same thing. They're they're oh. oppressive to their Muslim population as well. The yeah. the majority Hindu population is, is huh. oppressive. Um, so anyway, uh, Kashmir um, ne- they have lost their special status. Mahindra Modi has taken away their special status, allowing non Kashmiris to purchase land in um, Kashmir. And yeah. it seems like it's a they're planning to do the Israeli type land grab. Um, oh. where they uh, they get a bunch of Hindus to move into Kashmir, buy a bunch of property, and force the Muslims out. Just force them out. Wow. Yeah. Um, so people haven't reacted very well to that, including Pakistan, who yeah. sides obviously with the, the Muslim uh, majority in Kashmir. Yeah. And, uh, but here's the, here's the real kicker, is that um, both uh, India and Pakistan are nuclear-armed. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. And um, so India, they both have about 150 nuclear weapons apiece. Yeah. And when you look at the thousands <laughs> of nuclear weapons like the that um, the U.S. and Russia have, like close to 20,000 nuclear weapons that the U.S. and Russia have each, yeah. um, it doesn't sound like that much. But it's All, more it only, than enough. It only takes one. Yeah. Like, I mean... It's, it's more than enough. And yeah. to cause a real problem worldwide oh yeah um if they they start going on nuclear war then you have uh radiation spreading across the northern hemisphere um Mm. along with any dust and ash and i was gonna say the dust and ash would be the concern right start blocking out the sun yeah i saw Um, the matrix yeah yeah exactly (laughs) um and and it's a real problem because india has an army that's about five times the size of the pakistani army Really? So if India were to choose to invade Pakistan, yeah. the only way that Pakistan could defend itself really is to launch those missiles. Is to start launching. Yeah. Wow. And if Pakistan launches their missiles, then of course India launches theirs. Yeah. Um, and if India launches theirs at Pakistan, this is all on the border of and with Pakistan a close ally of China. Oh, no. Right? So China has about 300 nuclear weapons as well. Yeah. So uh, it, it's certainly possible. This, this can that, get out of hand quick. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. So this is the flashpoint for... This is the most likely place for a nuclear war to originate yeah. on this planet right now. Currently, I think. yeah. yeah. Um, wow. and, and nobody's talking about it. Because, yeah, I mean, and, I did hear a little bit of some of that on some foreign news sites yeah. a while back, but nothing recently. Yeah. Um, I, I don't of course, I haven't been looking for it, so... Yeah, I don't think that it's likely that Pakistan does anything about what's going on in Kashmir right now, except for complain really loudly. Yeah. Um, the question is, how far does India think it can push its yeah. advantage? Yeah. Um, and... I don't know. This is this is a really dangerous thing that's going on that everybody needs to know yeah. is happening. Um, and for some reason, it's, <laughs> and it's nobody just not does because, really. like I say, I mean, I haven't I haven't heard it on any U.S. media at all. Um, I do think I caught it on DW a couple of times. So I've, 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 I'm aware of this, but only vaguely. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I don't want to end on that kind of downer. Like, uh, just just talking about how <laughs> mass shootings may be caused by giving people the idea that their, you know, <laughs> their lives won't last or yeah. whatever and then talk about the most likely place for a nuclear war. The, the <laughs> impending nuclear war. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what have you got to like, close <laughs> us out on something positive? Uh, it's not like we really talk about positive things, uh, I guess. Well, but. I don't know. I mean, we can always talk about the ice cream liquor. Not yeah. that I have a whole lot to say about it, but... I, yeah, I don't know. I, I think we could get one of our attorney friends on here to talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Um, although, frankly, I thought that that was kind of funny. The, um, the ice cream liquor? Uh, yeah. Well, um, I did some research, man. Like, I'm, I don't... There is a lot of ice cream sold out there that mm-hmm. does not come safety sealed. Yeah. And I think that's a problem in the market. I mean, I don't think the government should step in and tell us to... To seal their ice cream, but I think that these, I think that public pressure should. Yeah, I, I because agree. Um, all you got to do, everybody, if you want to put an end to this kind of thing, is boycott any brands that don't have a safety seal. I won't buy any that don't have a safety I seal, would. and and upon research, and there is a quite a few. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I I know Blue Bell, and we sell two brands at my store that that do not have the safety seal. Yeah. Well, the the thing that went really terribly on this is this this poor girl who's just doing something stupid is facing a long jail term in yeah. her life really yeah i mean not that she'd die in jail but like you do 20 years when you're 20 years old and now you've got a sucks. record and well and you don't come out the same i mean yeah. you're you're like yeah you take somebody who's just doing some stupid practical joke and you turn them into a real criminal yeah right? exactly yeah they come out especially since that's the only way she's likely to be able to support herself after that because yeah. as a with a record she's not well, going to be able felon, to get a I mean, decent job you can't hire felons where i'm at yeah. i mean it's yeah so um, I, I think the whole idea of imprisoning somebody for something like that is just absolutely absurd. Yeah. And um, what it comes down to is that they're looking at – I mean they talk about uh, they want justice to be blind and, and so forth. Yeah. And, but there's a difference between um, serving justice and being punitive. Well, I mean, I, I'm I'm a big believer in more more authority needs to be given to like the judges to make dis- to to use discretion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the whole point of having judges. Yeah, yeah. Right? If, if Otherwise, there's you mandatory, may as well just plug it into a computer, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, cause, and that's what mandatory minimums do. When you mm-hmm. have these situations where the man, there's a mandatory sentence for a crime, there you you've eliminated the why even have a judge because yeah. there's no point and mm-hmm. because the judge should be the one that kind of makes some of those calls like yeah. hey yeah this person did something stupid we don't need to ruin their life over it they yeah. need to be punished yeah but um justice is supposed to be subjective yeah um and like i said this is the problem with that we're not trying to serve justice we're trying to be punitive now. yeah you, you just want to serve punishment not justice yeah and um that's not that's not a healthy legal system Agreed. and i don't know what the answer is exactly but <coughs> This is something that we should probably spend more time on at some point. Definitely yeah. get one of our attorney friends on on the line or whatever. Yeah, come over and talk with us about how can we change our justice system to to serve justice instead of punishment. Yeah, um, because it doesn't really accomplish anything. Yeah, I think that'd be fun to get get some a couple of the attorneys on here and mm-hmm. have a have a nice little roundtable discussion about that. Yeah, because they they would have way more insight than I would have, mm-hmm. um, and, and that'd be fun. Yeah, I think that would be too. Let's, let's um, see if we can hook that up. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk to them. We'll see if we can get, well, at least a couple of them over here. Get an interview. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, it's not an interview if you have two 
two extra people, right? It's only yeah. an interview if it's one well, extra person. Doesn't yeah, matter. you're right. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I guess we'll we'll wrap it up there. That's at least um, at least leave you with something to think about. Yeah, you know how yeah. do we how do we fix our justice system so that it yeah. serves justice instead of punishment? I think it's, it's a good question. It's a, it's a good ponderous question. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get nearly enough responses, by the way, on um, the question about uh, the the pre crime thing about the ah. uh, the potential terrorist that got arrested before he became a terrorist. Yeah. Um, so you guys aren't thinking enough out there. At least you're not telling me what you're thinking. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we may as well wrap it there though. Yeah. Um, thanks everybody for listening. Sorry we made you wait so long. We'll try not to do it again. I'll be back in town next week. Yeah. We hopefully. got these, <laughs> we got these two girls in here that are just whining and complaining about how long we're taking. Yeah. We got an audience today. Yeah. <laughs> and not, um, not a thrilled audience. Yeah. <laughs> It's only because you weren't paying attention. If you'd have been paying attention, you may have learned so something. <laughs> so uh, follow us on Facebook and um, iTunes and Podbean and uh, everywhere else that you can find us. Um, we like likes and shares. That helps get our stuff out there. Uh, if you think that we're doing something that's valuable or informative or anything positive, yeah, yeah. please let other people know. Absolutely. And um, thanks for listening. And uh, we'll. We'll see you guys next time. Uh, Try and stay free. Train how you fight. Ciao. Later. Bye.